How do rimfire suppressors affect accuracy? I'm gonna share my results in this video. Gavin you here from ultimatereloader.com. I've been having a ton of fun with my Anschutz rifle. I've got the 1710 competition in an XLR chassis. And then recently, you're gonna to wanna to check out the video that I published on this 54.18 Benchrest rifle. I've always wanted a bench rest Anschutz rifle. When I was at Anschutz in the underground shooting range they have, I shot my best rimfire group ever. And at that moment, I just thought to myself, I got to get one of these things. So I have a full story. I put the barreled action together with the stock. We do some shooting with it. Here's one of the results that we've got. Uh, quick specs, 20 inch barrel. It's got a match chamber. I specifically wanted the muzzle threaded half 28 so that I could put a tuner on it and so that I could test suppressors, the theme of this video, right? It's got the 5018 two-stage trigger. And what I like about this is the second stage is down at the 2.4 to 7 ounce range. It's adjustable uh, just where I want it to be. It also features a 10 round magazine, which was really handy. I know a lot of people are split on a bench rest rifle for rimfire and whether or not you should single round feed or have a magazine, but I really appreciated having it for this particular experiment. Now I'm just actually getting started still testing different types of ammo and different lots of ammo and different shooting techniques. I, have, I haven't had a bench rest rimfire rifle to date. Um, so I'm having a ton of fun with that. And the more I get behind the rifle, uh, the more excited I get about the results. So that's the rifle. And then I have two rimfire suppressors. I've got the CMMG Defcan 22, and then I've got the Fodera Armory Alamo. And both of them work really well. They're a little bit different. The CMMG Defcan 22 is a little bit larger in diameter. The Alamo is longer, probably has more internal volume, I'm guessing. So the Fodera is 0.945 inches in diameter. The Defcan 22 is one inch in diameter. The Defcan is five inches in length. Alamo is six inches in length. So they're a little bit different. And uh, the Defcan is, is lighter in weight. The Alamo is really robust and was designed, designed for the European markets and is basically no service required, whereas the Defcan 22 is so, uh, user serviceable. So different products. Uh, what I was wondering though was, what was their effect gonna be on accuracy? So we started at 100 yards. Why did we start at 100 yards? Normally I would start at 50. Well, with all of the snow we've had around here, we didn't have a 50 yard range set up with a bench. So I went straight to 100, boom, let's do this, right? Hey, we're on paper, hey. Not, not far off either. And we looked at different SKUs of ammunition and here was my philosophy on this. Again, this is not a strictly scientific test at all. This is kind of playing around with the rifle, taking a look at different lots of ammo with just the thread protector installed. So essentially a bare muzzle, no, no real muzzle device there. Okay, now I'm going far right. So we've got Midas Plus, Midas Plus, Center X, and now I'm going with uh, R50. Looking at different groups, looking at my prior results, trying to get a configuration, a lot of ammo and a skew of ammo that's gonna shoot well, and then to shoot it with the Defcan 22 and with the Alamo to see how they would compare. After we did the 100 yard shooting, we were able to put together kind of a temporary 50 yard range. So then we shot some of the same ammunition at 50 yards. Now, not all of the tests are the same between 100 yards and 50 yards. So hence, it's not a scientific test. We would need a lot more uh, data sets. We probably wanna shoot 10 shot strings and we'd probably wanna shoot, you know, at least five or 10 strings for each configuration of ammo and muzzle device. But this was kind of more about, you know, if I go out and do this, what's gonna happen? So what we ended up doing 
was we would test, we would shoot two strings for each configuration and then take the best group from those two strings and kind of compare the results. Now, we've just got the long shot LR3 camera system here at Ultimate Reloader and that helped tremendously, especially at 100 yards for this particular story because I was having trouble seeing some of the shots on paper and with the long shot camera system, we have our iPad right there on the shooting bench and I can see very clearly what's going on and we're also able to do more filming of our shooting, right? So we've got the groups captured on camera now to, to share with you so that you can see some of that. And the configurations that we tested, bare muzzle with the def can and with the foot air, and then we also had 50 yards and 100 yards. So it's kind of a lot of shooting, which is definitely fun. And here's how things ended up from the best group to the worst group. And what's really interesting here is I thought that things were going to fall apart more in terms of MOA, in terms of nonlinear shot dispersion at 100. And that, if you look here, the, the blue uh, rows with the, the distance marker there are 100 yards and the yellow are 50. And you can see that they almost alternate going down. So there was no strong representation either way. I thought the MOA would be a little bit better at 50 because of wind or other things. Now, we didn't have a lot of wind. I think we had pretty much still air, which was ideal for this kind of testing. And you'll see here, uh, we had MOA results starting at about 0.479 and going all the way up to 1.8 inches. And uh, to be sub half MOA with a rim fire, and those, those two top results were at 100 yards as well. That's really good. Like, that's good for a center fire rifle. It's exceptionally good for a rim fire. And that's what I've found with this particular rifle is if you get the right ammo and the rifle likes the ammo, all rim fires are really selective about the ammo that you feed through them. That's just a thing. This thing shoots absolutely awesome. And it helps us to isolate these factors like which muzzle device that we're using. So what I then did, oh, another interesting note here, you'll see the two notes here, two identical groups. For the R50 ammo with the def can at 50 yards, the two groups, uh, which it looks like it was 0.394, the two groups I was measuring with digital calipers were within about three thousandths of an inch. And the same thing happened with Midas Plus and the bare muzzle at 100 yards. Totally crazy. Okay, so let's summarize how things broke down based on the muzzle device configuration. So the bare muzzle did do the best with an average group size of 0.789 MOA. Then we had the DEFCAN 22 with an average group size of 0.973 MOA. And then the Fodera Alamo at 1.199 inches average MOA. Now some of the groups with the Fodera, like you see the best group here, R50 at 100 yards, 0.560 inches, which is 0.535 MOA. Really, really good. So I was a little surprised that the Fodera was at the bottom because as I was shooting the groups, I was impressed with it, but there were certain ammo configs where it just fell apart. So, you know, while these results stack this way, I think really it has to do with what ammo, maybe a lot or a skew, does a particular configuration prefer, kind of like when you use a tuner. Um, so there are a lot of variables here, but this does pretty clearly show, at least for my limited data set and for this experiment, that the bare muzzle will give you the best accuracy. Now, if I added a tuner on there, good question. I'm guessing the tuner is gonna act like the bare muzzle, but with a different tune, right? And again, lots of different factors kind of at play. So conclusions, yes, the rimfire suppressors did open up the groups. Um, the MOA was consistently good between 50 yards and 100 yards. That was a surprise for me. I thought there was just, things just falling apart, you know. I mean, all in good proportion, but still, that 100 yards was a lot more difficult, and it turned out without wind, it wasn't. 
And ammunition is definitely a huge variable. It was really clear some of the groups that I didn't include, it was like, okay, well, this rifle with this config just does not like this particular skew of ammo. And sometimes that skew of ammo shot really, really good in one of my other rifles. So this is, this is a whole different world. You know, I don't have reloading variables to help control the situation here with powder charge and different bullets and different seating depths, different primers. There's none of that here. It's a different game, which is really fun. I'm really, really enjoying this a lot. Some other thoughts. It is possible that the suppressor doesn't inherently change the shot dispersion, but it instead changes the tune of the barrel, which could be overcome with additional ammunition testing and lot testing. I'm not sure that's entirely true. I do think it does change the shot dispersion. I think it does open it up a bit, but that effect could be largely mitigated, potentially, by running different types of ammo through with that particular rimfire suppressor. It's just a question for me at this point. Another thought that I had was, I got really, really good results with a 30 cal suppressor on one of my other rifles. And I'm wondering if with more clearance, there's less, def less effect on the bullet. There's a lot of things happening in there. Turbulence, gas flow and pressure, distribution, lots of different things, but that would be probably the next experiment that I'd want to do is I'd want to take this rifle and throw on a 30 cal can and compare it to some of the results that we got that were otherwise promising with these other configs. So that's, that's the results of this testing. The guys that commented on my channel, hey, if you throw a rimfire suppressor on, you're going to open up your groups. That did happen this time. What I want to know from you is <laughs> what have you observed? What do you think? What's your theory? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. There's going to be more cool feature with this rifle and my other rimfire rifles. Really, really good stuff. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.